Google Anti-Gravity is an incredible AI coding tool, but only if you use it the right way. I figured out a workflow with Anti-Gravity that will have you building AI apps so much faster. If you follow along with me until the end, you'll not only be a master of Anti-Gravity, but you'll have a full app you built by yourself, even if you've never coded before. Now let's lock in and get into it. So Google Anti-Gravity, their brand new AI coding tool, completely free to download. Go on the website, I'll put a link down below, download it now, free to use, tons of free limits right now, so you can just build and build and build without paying anything. There were some bugs at first, but it seems like a lot of those are ironed out now. So get that installed and you will see this screen. This probably looks a lot like what you're used to with like Cursor or Windsurf. The difference is, is we're not gonna be using this screen at all inside Anti-Gravity. What we're actually gonna be doing is opening up this agent manager here. This is where the true magic of Anti-Gravity lives. Click that, and that is going to pop open this agent manager here. The workflow I'm about to show you involves workspaces, the agents inside the workspaces, as well as the playground. These are things incredibly unique to anti-gravity. So let's do this. Let's start building an app, and as we build it, I'll show you all these cool features and show you my master workflow that will get you so much more productivity out of anti-gravity. We are going to build a stock investing and in news app that helps us track different companies, see their stock price, see their latest news, and get AI analysis. It's going to be really helpful if you build this out. Follow along with me, and we'll get this done, make sure to open a workspace and open up a new folder in there. You will now get this new agent that will work in that workspace. We're going to put in this prompt. I'll put this down below as well. I want to build an investment web app using Next.js and Tailwind V3. I want to be able to enter a stock ticker. Then it shows me the price chart as well as the latest news for the company. Use the screenshot attached as visual inspiration for what the app should look like. Do not write any code, just build me the plan. So here's a couple things you need to do with anti-gravity, specifically Gemini 3. You need to use UI inspiration. My favorite way to use UI inspirations with V0. So on a live stream a few days ago, I tested out every single AI app to see what builds the best UI. The winner by far was V0. So what you wanna do is you wanna go into V0 and describe a UI you want. It'll build it out very, very quickly. And then we can screenshot this, go back in here, paste it into our agent and use that as visual inspiration. Gemini 3 is incredible at building UI, but only if you give it visual inspiration inspiration. So if you want, go into V0, describe what kind of UI you want, or just take any other app you like and screenshot that and use that as visual inspiration. We're also going to make sure we're in planning mode. So there's a drop down here, planning and fast. Here's the interesting thing. Planning mode's not the planning mode you're used to. It still writes code, which I don't really understand. And I hope Google fixes this, but there's basically planning and fast and planning is really just slow mode. It just does a lot of thinking. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, do not write any code. So, so it specifically knows we just want to plan. And with that being said, we're going to hit send on this and it is going to get to work. And in a second, after it builds out V1 of our app, I'm actually going to show you all the cool quirks with anti-gravity that makes it so unique. So this is something really awesome with anti-gravity as it builds here. It actually creates artifacts as it goes. So if you can see here, implementation plan, I can click open while it works. It built an entire document with the implementation plan. Typically, a lot of these AI builders, they just make their plans in line. So it's just in the console. It goes down and puts the plan in the middle of it. With anti-gravity, this is really sick. Everything it builds is an artifact, which means it's a document you can review and read while it is doing work for you. So really important, while it plans, while it builds, read all the artifacts, read all the plans, because it will make it much easier to understand what it's about to do. And there's also some really cool features with these artifacts, which we'll get into in a second, but this is going to change how you build that. All right, so built the plan, it went through, it executed on the plan. Now it looks like it's ready to go. I love this, it builds a walkthrough, which basically explains everything it built out, now we can run this. So here's something amazing about the way anti-gravity works. As our agent's building here, it's actually testing the app as it goes. So you can see this integrated browser where it actually opened the app it's building and is testing it out and taking screenshots. With other AI app builders, you actually need to go in and test every little thing by yourself. Anti-gravity, because it's made by Google, who also made Chrome, obviously, they can integrate full end-to-end -end testing inside anti-gravity 
activity as well. But not only that, we can also interact with this as it's going and leave notes. So say for instance, I wanna add like a crypto section right here. I can highlight the screenshot and I can leave a comment that says like add a crypto section and annotate this in and add comment. Now it's actually gonna start doing that work based on my annotation. So one power tip you need to know here is as this works, look for the screenshots and the work it's doing and leave annotations inside the media it creates. Then it will make much more accurate changes of what you're looking for. This is really powerful and no other tools doing this right now. So it looks like this is ready to test. Let me open up the local host here and let's see what this looks like. And Boom, there we go. There's the app. This actually looks really, really nice for a V1. And wow, as that was going, look at this. It is now opening this up and testing it itself. So you can see it has full control over my Google Chrome and it is testing every part of the app. You want to make sure when you download anti-gravity, you also download the anti-gravity browser extension. Because look at this, it's actually going around and clicking on the, I, that wasn't even me. It's clicking on the features by itself and testing for you. This is truly the closest we've ever gotten to having like an AI employee working for you. That is really amazing. Here's the thing though, this isn't even like 10% of what makes anti-gravity really unique. So that V1 looks cool. I showed you how to annotate the screenshots as it's testing. I show you how it tests itself. But here's where anti-gravity gets very unique. So we have our V1, let's do this. Let's spin up more agents in our agent manager here to do other work for us. So I'm gonna click on this plus sign next to our project and I'm gonna say, I want you to be a product manager agent. Take a look at our app and build me a roadmap of more features we can build. So I'm gonna make it our product manager and have it build out our roadmap. And boom, just like that, you can see the second agent going, but let's do this. Let's now make a marketing agent. I'm going to say, I want you to be a marketing agent. Write me a blog post and five tweets announcing our app and all the features. Boom. Now it's going to start writing the marketing for that stock investing app for us. But let's do this. Let's spin up another agent. We're going to say, allow us to add the amount of shares we own to each stock so we can track our portfolio. So we can see how much money we're winning and losing every day. I'm going to hit send on that. And now we have another agent working for us here building out our app. And now while we do all this, I just came up with an idea for another app we can build. I just came up with an idea for a 3D first person shooter game. I'm a big gamer, I wanna build a 3D game. So I'm gonna go to our playground. What are playgrounds you ask? Well, playgrounds are the place where we do experiments and try out new ideas. The way I like to think about this is as I'm building, as I'm working on the main projects in our workspaces, if I come up with other ideas, I go into our playground to experiment. If you're anything like me, you come up with 50, 60 new ideas for apps a day. You open up many different windows of Visual Studio Code. Your entire computer slowed to a halt because you have 40 Visual Studio Code windows open. Open, but these playgrounds make it so much easier because instead of creating a whole bunch of files and windows in code, it just builds out a small experiment that you can test and validate. And if you like those ideas, you can move it to its own workspace and build out the entire app. So let's do this. I'm going to say in a new playground, I want to build a 3D first person shooter game using 3JS, make it cool and stylistic. I'm going to hit send on that. And it's now going to get to work in this playground, building that out. I don't need to open up five more windows. I just start the work right here. So we have our AI agents working our main workspace. Again, this is where our major apps are. Then we have an agent going in our playground where we're doing an experiment. Maybe this game will be cool, maybe it won't, we'll see. While we're doing all that, we can open up our inbox, which is right here. The way our inbox works is this is like where our agents talk to us and message us and give us status updates. So as you have multiple AI agents running, working on different projects, we can go to our inbox and see where all their statuses are. This is basically their place where they like email us and say, hey, I finished this feature, I finished this for you. What do you think? Do you approve or not? So I came in here, I'm in the inbox. We can see, okay, my AI agent that was working on the tracking of our portfolio, they finished. I can go check this out if I want. We had our product manager AI agent work. We can open up that artifact and you can see right here, here is our roadmap. We'll go back to our inbox. Let's see what our marketing agent is up to. So here we go, marketing app launch content. We can click on that and let's see here, marketing content. Let's open this up and boom. 
There is a blog post as well as five different tweets that it wrote for us for our app. And we can take this and just start putting the content out. Oh, and then it looks like our playground experiment, the 3D first person shooter game, it needs our approval. We're going to hit send on that. Approve uh, the building it's doing there. This is the mindset shift you need to have when using anti-gravity. You're going from a person who's building apps to a manager of an entire one person business, right? You're managing many different AI employees that are doing different things, your marketer, your product manager, you have different divisions of your business where you're spinning up experiments. Have you have like your R and D division that's experimenting with 3d games. And instead of watching 20 windows work at once, you have your inbox, which is basically your email inbox, your agents communicating with you, looking for approval, telling you when documents are done, telling you when it's done features. It is a shift from hands on guiding to full on management. And I think this is the future of building with AI. So this is before we test our app to see where it's at. This is the workflow you want to use, right? You want this agent manager up at all times on your monitor. If your monitor is not big enough, put up an iPad or put up a second screen, have it up at all times. And throughout the day, as you're coming up with new ideas, you are going in, you're spinning up playgrounds, spinning up different experiments. You're going to the app you're working on. You're spinning up new agents to do different work for your main projects, your main apps. And you're keeping an eye on your inbox to see when your agents finish work. This is the workflow you want to use with anti-gravity that you can't really do with any other app. Okay, so it looks like our agent finished the ability building the portfolio tracking. Let's go in and see what this looks like. So it looks like, okay, it has its new functionality and now it has holdings in there. So you can enter the amount of shares you hold of each stock. That's sick. What does this button do? Oh, you can enter your number of shares. All right, let's see how this does here. I'm going to enter number of shares, hit save and boom, you can see our new portfolio size. Oh, and the total value to see how much it went up that day. That's amazing. This is actually an investment app I'm going to use. This is really cool. These are the best types of apps to make, the ones where you'd actually use them and actually improve your life. This is awesome. So as I just went back to our AI agent, and this is cool, it's now working on that crypto dashboard page. So remember that annotation I did earlier? It now has that as the next thing to do and is automatically entering that in. So again, another amazing feature here. Any screenshot, any test it does, you can just quickly annotate and add commands as you go. They just thought of all these little details in anti-gravity that are amazing. And it looks like I, was, I wasn't even done testing the uh, portfolio management and now it looks like it is good to go on the crypto stuff. Let's accept this and see where it's at. And boom, just like that, it opens it up. You can see there's the new crypto option on the left as well as crypto prices in here. This is amazing. Like this is how you get done things so much faster, right? You're managing your agents. You're annotating the screenshots as it goes. You're spinning up new playgrounds and agents as you think of new ideas and features. And you went from a handhold guider to a full-on manager. That's the mindset shift you need for anti-gravity. There are still some rough edges Google needs to figure out with anti-gravity and Gemini 3, mostly around instruction following. It still seems as like it's not great at instruction following. Some things you ask it to do, it doesn't obey. In this demo, I didn't run into that at all, so that's very nice. But I'd say the biggest difference between Gemini 3 at the moment and Claude is Gemini just has a lot of rough edges where you ask it to do some things and it doesn't do it perfectly. So it's going to get it better. There's like 20 trillion developers at Google, so I'm sure they'll figure it out. But this is the workflow you want to use. Spin up multiple agents in your workspaces. Use playgrounds to run experiments throughout the day. And then have your inbox open so you're constantly on top of what your agents are doing and when they need approval. If you keep this open at all times in your monitor, you're going to get so much more done. Have you been using anti-gravity? Let me know down the replies below. I also just launched the Vibe Coding Academy. It's my private community where it has a full Claude Code masterclass, as well as weekly meetings with myself where I answer your questions. I help guide you through building apps. Link for that is down below. Check that out now. Also leave a like if you learned anything. Subscribe and turn on notifications. All I do is make amazing videos about building with AI, and I'll see you in the next video.